too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Q&A of the room will about, is about to begin. Mesdames et messieurs, le Q&A du The Room uh, va commencer dans quelques instants. Merci. vous asseoir pour euh, répondre euh, pour poser des questions au réalisateur qui y répondra Good evening. Um, we have the director and the producer here with us. So um, let's start with the first question for you. Um, it's like, a, yeah, it looks like a daily life story of a young couple, but um, it has also, like a Playboy mentioned, touch the movie. How did you get inspired uh, for the story? To make it Okay. okay so, uh, it's in English? Um, if, if that's okay for you. Yeah. Ou si, si tu veux, on peut parler en français. Hein. Euh, so the story is just uh, was inspired by a personal personal uh, experience where a couple moved, uh, friends of mine uh, moved to the countryside and had a problem with one of their uh, of of one of of the house they moved in because they were completely isolated. And they started becoming a little crazy uh, because they were isolated in the forest. And it's a lot of people that move from the city to the countryside. Usually, they are uh, living something which is uh, which is uh, pretty interesting because we all fantasize to move to the countryside. And when people do it, actually, they they have problems because they 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 find themselves completely isolated from the from the social network they're in. And from then on, they started becoming crazy. And I had this idea with this friends of mine, which uh, I I took it a little bit further with this room and this complete, you know. Yeah, you have a very interesting atmosphere um, in the movie, and I'm wondering what came first. Did you decide to choose the atmosphere first, or did you first um, create the story? What was there in the beginning? Uh, no, the story first. Huh? Then the atmosphere comes from the music, the uh, the the way you you 
you put the camera, you know, all this, this the, the, the sound design, which is very important. Uh, and it brings, uh, you know, usually you find what your atmosphere after the shooting. You don't find it before, because it, it comes from the comedian, it comes also from the, the, the way you film. And uh, it's something, of course, you, you, you try to create before, but then the actors also get in the mood and everything comes together. You put in a lot of effort in the special effects. Uh, could you tell us more about that? How did you do that? Actually, the special effects in the beginning with Yale, we had like 50% of the film was, was complete special effects, but we didn't have the money. So we had to reduce it to uh, 20%, 10%. And uh, we had to find particular moments where, uh, where, the, where you, you put the, the special effects so it, it, it's not all over the place. Because sometimes in movies where there's special effects everywhere, it loses its impact and its power and there uh, we try to focus on the main ideas of time passing by uh, the money you know s like deleting the all the the crumbling scenes you know the time passing by really fast and we had to find the, the right time to put it on because we didn't have enough money <laughs> yes of course um, talking about time how long did the project take you she can answer uh, what five years the yeah. writing was like two years and then uh, in fact we spent one year and a half on the Canadian uh, financing and then it fell down so so then one year more so it's like four years and a half something like this. So um, the movie is actually, if I was right, a uh, co-production between Belgium, Luxembourg and France um, what's the deal about that? What can you tell us what's about? Well, in fact, um, when uh, when we when we, we when we knew that we cannot do it in Canada anymore, so we thought, okay, we have you know we have to do this film. I was like really willing to do this film, and we had already versus the Belgium production. They were interested even when we wanted to shoot in Canada. They were inside the film because when they read the script, they really liked it a lot. So they said, "We come with you, even if we are like 10% producers." So they were inside only anyway. So when Kevin went away, uh, well, I was in contact also with Lilian uh, from Bidibut from Luxembourg, who worked with Christian before on Renaissance, and so I proposed him to join us also. And Versus were, were there anyway, so uh, and then we said, okay, we can do it, you know, it's a house. We, and uh, in Luxembourg you have some forest that look like uh, anywhere, so it was possible to do it like this. And how was it for you as producer to work on this project? Because uh, there are a lot of producers involved, so the project looks uh, on, even on that uh, fact quite unique it was not easy because the financing of this film was like going like this you know also because it's a, like it's a french project but then uh, it's in english and it's we are not shooting in france so it's like french but not so french also so uh, so it was it was not easy but it was great in a way because it was the the way to the film it was this way so uh, you know, it was like uh, like all the film, like it's a it's a road to go. And but it was really we were really lucky to find uh, those partners and to do the, because uh, it permit us to do the film. It was really great because really we we found uh, the crew, the Belgium crew, and the, also the Luxembourg crew, really great. You know, so they because for us it was new. You know, we work with French uh, crew normally, even if we, we are doing a film abroad, we are going with our... Now it was like most of the crew was Belgium and from Luxembourg, so it was really, really, really great. All right, we have already a question coming from the audience. Est-ce qu'il y a une question dans la salle? Vous avez des questions vanuit de salle? Oui, on a des questions. Um, could I ask two questions? Please, two. Um, the choice to make uh, the character uh, of Kevin Belgian, was that because he was cast or was that before 
Uh, was the choice made before then? Uh, actually, in the beginning, because we were shooting in Canada, uh, we had a Canadian actor. Uh, but but still, we had, had Kevin that read it the, read the script uh, one year before, and he wanted absolutely to do the film. And once Ke uh, Ca Canada said that we were not going to make the film, uh, Kevin said, "I'm still here. I want to do the film absolutely." And it was uh, his, the way he was enthusiastic. We really, uh, I mean, I met him and we started to talk about the theme and the the, the atmosphere of the film, and he. He joined us, and I was really happy because he was completely invested in the film. Thank you. Uh, the other question: um, Did you shoot it in English uh, for the international market, or was it just a choice that you made? Uh... Yeah, actually, I spent three years in America uh, when I was in high school, from 15 to 18, and I watched all the films from uh, that were inspired by. Uh, you know, all the films that, that uh, probably a lot of people know about, like Nightmare on Elm Street, stuff like that. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm more influenced by American genre film than French film. So it was like a natural thing for me. And I always wanted to make something that everybody can watch. And the problem with French is that when you do a French film, then it's really reduced to the French market. And I didn't want that for the film. Encore une question, donc une vraie. Yes. Oui, je peux poser la question en français. Oui, bien oui. Sûr. oui. Mais en fait, je, je suis parmi le public francophone ou néerlandophone ici. Mais de toute façon, ici, on dit il n'a pas de nom. Le, 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 le jeune qui, qui est en fait l'ancien habitant de la maison, parce que on ne dit pas, et je pense qu'on pourrait l'expliquer au début du film, puisqu'il est censé venir d'Europe, que quand on, on a un, un inconnu, on l'appelle John Doe. Et ça n'est pas dit dans le film, et donc les, a, je crois que les gens perdent un petit peu la, la notion. Ben, il a un nom, le gars, puisqu'il s'appelle John Doe, alors qu'en réalité, il n'en a pas. Oui, alors la traduction, c'est Monsieur X. Hein. Oui, oui, c'est ça. Oui. Donc le problème, c'est que John Doe aux états unis c'est... Tout le monde oui, sait que... Qui, voilà. Quand on n'a pas le nom de quelqu'un, on l'appelle Quand John on perd l'identité, on... voilà, exactement. Ah, oui. Et, mais je crois que c'est traduit en Monsieur X, hein, d'ailleurs. Le, le sous-titre est Monsieur X. Non, non, à chaque fois, on mettait John Doe. À chaque fois, on met John Doe. Alors oui. c'est peut-être une erreur, là. <rire> voilà, ouais, c'était okay, une remarque. Ouais. Mais comme, comme ils viennent d'Europe, a priori, puisque c'est dit dans le film, on pourrait expliquer ça à un certain moment à... À la, à, la, à la dame, dire ben oui, John Doe, c'est comme ça qu'on appelle les gens qui n'ont pas de nom. Quoi. Voilà. Okay. Mmh. Euh, il y a une explication pour euh, les sous-titres. Ils sont faits par euh, les étudiants de l'université. Et là, ça, c'est une possibilité que la traduction n'était pas été euh, euh, révisée. By the way, guys, there's still. Il y a toujours des places libres ici si tu veux vous asseoir. Oui. Vous asseoir. Um, en tout cas, on peut continuer avec, euh, avec les autres questions. Si vous voulez vous asseoir là, c'est mieux, mieux pour les caméras, pour les voir. <rire> D'accord. Donc, on a parlé euh, de cette production qui est une production internationale, euh, mais votre cast, les acteurs, euh, les comédiens, ils sont aussi euh, internationaux. Euh, comment vous avez trouvé tout le monde euh, ben, et, En fait, euh, Yael Fogiel avait déjà tourné avec Olga Kurilenko, et c'est une des premières, enfin une des dernières actrices dans cette recherche infernale de l'acteur international qu'on a eu pendant à peu près un an. Il faut savoir qu'aux états unis on a approché plein d'acteurs via des... Euh, via des... Comment ça s'appelle des, des agents. Et aucun n'a répondu parce que c'est très compliqué là-bas. Et du coup, à un moment donné, on a présenté le film à Olga. Et elle a accepté tout de suite. Et puis, elle est restée sur le casting tout le long. Et Kevin est arrivé en deuxième. Donc, euh, c'était assez simple, finalement. OK, merci. Euh, il y a encore une question dans le public. C'est qui Oui, le... bonjour. La maison, elle est située où ça Elle était où ah. Pas l'adresse exacte. Il euh, y a le producteur euh, belge qui est là, mais je ne sais pas où il est. Parce que c'était pas loin de Liège, non ah, Je ne sais pas. 
mais je ne sais plus où était... Euh... On ne sait plus le nom. Et... En tout cas, la maison est en Belgique, Where quelque is... part. Gwen, Jacques Henry. Et le premier étage, il faut savoir que tout ce qui est euh, situé au premier étage a été reconstruit au Luxembourg. Donc en fait, on a filmé la maison en Belgique, le rez-de-chaussée, le jardin. Et on a dû reconstruire le premier étage euh, au Luxembourg pour des questions financières. Et du coup, euh, on a tourné deux semaines en Belgique et deux semaines au Luxembourg pour tout ce qui était premier étage. Vous avez parlé d'acteurs euh, américains. Mais le, le casting se fait comment en général pour, euh, non, En fait, euh, comme c'était un film en anglais, au départ, on devait tourner au Canada. Au Canada, on avait un super producteur qui était le producteur de David Cronenberg, qui s'appelle Martin Katz. Et du coup, lui, il a lancé un casting américain. Donc, on envoie le scénario à tous les agents, au CIA, euh, je ne sais plus comment il s'appelle. Euh, voilà. et, et en fait, on a perdu beaucoup de temps parce que quand il, euh, on n'est pas connu, nous, ni producteur, ni réalisateur. Ils regardent, ils nous ont donné des listes et des listes, mais en fait, personne n'a jamais répondu. Donc, on a perdu beaucoup de temps. Et quand on est revenu pour le faire en Belgique et en Luxembourg, on a pris des castings directeurs. Alors, pour les deux rôles principaux, on savait qu'on voulait Olga et Kevin, parce qu'on est revenu en Europe, on s'est dit, bon, on prend les gens qu'on connaît, on sait qu'Olga, on a déjà fait un film avec elle, on la connaît très bien, donc on peut, on peut lui proposer directement. Et Kevin a été, donc, euh, par Versus, euh, qui connaissait, a travaillé déjà avec, avec Kevin, donc voilà. Et pour les autres rôles, on avait un directeur de casting en Belgique et au Luxembourg. Donc l'enfant et l'ado le, sont... Voilà, okay. l'enfant est un enfant de parents anglais qui sont installés au Luxembourg. Mais on a vu beaucoup d'enfants, mais l'enfant est extraordinaire. Pour nous, c'est... L'enfant de 8 ans était un miracle parce que vous savez comment c'est les enfants, ce pas des, des acteurs professionnels, donc il faut trouver la perle rare et un rôle pas facile pour un enfant parce que voilà la scène qu'il a avec Kevin où, où Kevin lui dit mais tu n'es pas un vrai, tu n'es pas, pas un vrai humain, c'est pas facile à jouer quoi. Donc on, est, on a cherché, on a beaucoup beaucoup cherché. Donc il y avait un directeur de production au Luxembourg qui nous l'a présenté lui. Et, voilà. et puis euh, quelqu'un en Belgique qui a fait aussi les petits rôles, etc. Par exemple, pour John Doe aussi, le, le mec qui est à l'hôpital psychi euh, voilà, psychiatrique. C'est un Américain qui vit en Belgique ou au Luxembourg, je ne sais plus. Bah, qui vit en Californie et au Luxembourg à moitié du temps. Et du coup, il est venu de Californie pour faire le, le tournage. Aussi, Shane Lado, c'est un Anglais qui vit entre Belgique, le Luxembourg et l'Angleterre. Ok, merci. So actually, um, the, the film has also a, a big uh, philosophical um, part in it, uh, in the story. So how did you prepare yourself for that? Like um, there are strong elements of Nietzsche coming in the, um, in the story. How did you prepare yourself? Have you read some, some books or...? Uh, actually, the film is a, is a little bit like... Um a mirror of our society. It's like all about consumerism and uh, the fact that whatever you you have and whatever you you strive for and whatever how much money you make, all this is just you know it's a fiction. It's it's like it, it once you die, everything goes down the drain. Uh, so it it was more about uh, trying to make a film uh, like a. A symbolic film of, of our situation today. It was not. It's not much inspired by books. I think that someone talked to me about a, but afterwards about uh, it's called uh, the monkey's paw, and uh, it's a short story from the 1900. And and somebody told me that it resembled my film, but I hadn't read it before. So. Okay. Well, today we had a world premiere. Um, what do you think of the reception? here at Biff, by the audience. I have no idea, it's just people screaming all the time, so. No, it was fun. Great, great. And um, now you are here at Biff, uh, do you think you would return here next year? Yeah, with a comedy. <laughs> with a comedy next time, okay, you have it. He promised, you promise? The gore comedy. Okay, more comedy. Yeah, uh, gore, horror, gore. horror comedy, great. Um, 
But after Biff, where do you want to go with this film? Actually, actually, the film is sold everywhere. everywhere. So it's going in South America, Asia, America, England, uh, Spain, uh, Germany, and it's in, in here. And so it's coming out everywhere. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know. So how was it for you as director to work with the cast? Uh, it was really nice, really uh, simple. Uh, Olga and Kevin were great. They were every day on set. Uh, they were not drunk. They were they're normal people trying to do their job. Very focused. So it was it was just a simple uh, shooting, you know, just people working, trying to make the best thing. I mean, there was no interesting story out of the normal, you know. Every we had a very short time. It was like 30 days, uh, eight hours a day, and we're just running towards. I mean, running through the film we had pretty much uh, three or four sh uh, uh, you know like three times you had like three times they, they could they could do a scene three times in a row and after that you had to quit you had to do go to the next one so it had to be perfect all the time you know it was it was difficult because we had to keep the schedule you know and when it comes to casting, uh, what was important for you and why did you choose those actors? Actually, the, the thing, there was a chemistry between Kevin and Olga when they met and I felt that we could go through the film because it's very difficult to find the chemistry. Some actors hate each other and that was not the case. They really liked each other and uh, so I felt that we could go, we, we could go forward. Um, on peut uh, demander si, uh, si quelqu'un a encore de questions là, oui Yes, I, I really wanted to ask a question about the design of the electrical engine. Um, it, it, it really has a menacing presence in the film. Um, I, it looked vaguely familiar, but I can't put my finger on it where it comes from. But now that I hear that you worked with a producer of David Cronenberg, it starts making sense. Uh, so where does the design of this, of the uh, electrical the, engine, there it is. Yeah, the, the basement engine, yeah. Where does it come from? Um, have you seen The Shining? Yes. <laughs> so there's this uh, geometrical shape where, where you find on the rugs. It's, okay. it's in the title of the movie also, right? right? Exactly. The design of the yeah. title. And also, it's uh, actually it's a B. It's a five. You know, five. Uh, it's it's a it's a shape which you can find in B. Uh, it's like something you can find everywhere in nature. So it's, it's just appealing to me. So I started to work with uh, cables and everything. And I, actually, the backstory talks about uh, this architect, which is supposed to be Springwell. And this guy, uh, I imagine that he was, he was a, a little bit like the mirror of, uh, of uh, you know, the first engineers that were tr trying to find... Uh, like Tesla, you know, and uh, for me it was a little bit like if it was Tesla that did all this stuff, and that because there's a legend about this guy, so it was in the in my in my in the back of my mind. Encore une question, another question. Yes, the lady. Hi. You said that you are mostly talking about society today and what you're going through. But did you think about Oedipus Complex? Did that have any influence? Oedipus Complex, like fraud, yeah, yeah, signal course. fraud, and because yeah, yeah. I saw that all over. Well, it's a mix uh, of uh, Oedipus, Oedipus and also a mix of, of internet and uh, people having babies today. You don't need a, like, if you want to have a baby, you don't need a man anymore. You just go, you know, in a sperm bank and have a child on your own. So it's it's a little bit of a mix of all that, and it for me it's a little it's interesting to see what, that you can pretty much order anything you want today and have it, you know. And I was trying to work on that subject and find a way to uh, to express it, you know. Yeah, at the end of the film, at the end of the film, like the room was fooling with a with a couple. Can you explain that a little bit more? Was it like? Like um, our mind that that will fool with us when we will, when we're losing ourselves in our most uh, yeah yeah desire. you're right you're right actually the room is actually the room is not messing with them it's it's pretty much the child that is grown up and is starting to mess with them 
And the room is the extension of the kid also, so he, he, he doesn't have to talk too much, he can think about things and they appear. So it's also the, the mindset and all the, all the maze inside of ourselves and all this, this game of who's who and the double and all these themes which are really interesting for me. Uh, did the final result of the film end up the way you imagined it or not? That's difficult to answer, yeah. I, I don't know. Well, that's what it is anyway. So, you always, you always want to make a better film, always, you know. So, you're happy with what it is, but then, of course, you, if you see, see it too much after a while, you want to make it again. Okay, one, uh, one more question. Uh, what about um, if you, each of you had your own uh, magical room, what would you wish for? Peace. What about you? Uh, well, the, the problem is the house, you know, if you have a magical room but you cannot take it out of the house, nothing. <laughs> Any other up upcoming projects uh, what you're working on? Uh, yeah, I'm working on an animation film about Charlie Chaplin. It's uh, an adaptation of The Kid. And it's happening, and it's it's a modern adaptation, a futurist, futuristic adaptation of the kid, which will happen in like in three th in 2,500, for example, in New York. And uh, and Chaplin is not Chaplin anymore; he's a robot. Yeah. So that's uh, that's that we're doing this with the Luxembourg, with Lilian, which had work on the film. Will this be 100% animated or will you work? Yeah, completely animated, yeah. Without actors? Without actors, that's what, yeah. She wanted to apply for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Last chance to ask a question. Dernière chance pour poser une question. C'est bon. Okay, thank you very much thank you for, uh, your time. for being with us. There's an autograph session here uh, at the table. Il y a une possibilité to recevoir une signature ici. Euh, juste euh, donc pendant que vous vous mettez en ligne pour les euh, autographes, je me permets de donner un cadeau de la part du festival. Alors euh, voilà, c'est pour vous. Euh, je vous montre ce que c'est, c'est la sérigraphie du poster de cette année. Alors je, je pose mon micro pour lui montrer.
Cote d'Ivoire. If you if you're going to the darkness, it means you're going to be a bit on. Yeah.